All right, grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. This is going to take a while longer than usual. It's going to get ugly. Hi, my name is Hartwood and today we are going to take a look at the brand new Dell Inspiron 7506 2-in-1 with the also brand new dedicated Intel GPU, the Iris XE Max, which is the first Intel GPU in two decades. The model that I'm reviewing today also has an Intel i7 1165G7 4-core 8-thread processor, 16GB of DDR4 RAM with 3200 MHz, a really good 15-inch 4K IPS touchscreen, a 512GB NVMe SSD, Intel Wi-Fi 6, an active pen, a 68Wh battery and Thunderbolt 4 support, a fingerprint sensor and last but not least it can be transformed into a tablet by just flipping it around. Ta -da. Over here in Europe this configuration costs 1400 euros which is about 1500 dollars and this is the most expensive combination that you can get of this laptop right now and you can acquire it directly at Dell's website. Now let's start with the full aluminium body which looks slick and nice and in my opinion it actually feels very firm. The display is also very stable. It has a total height of 16 millimeters and a weight of 1.8 kilograms. And it cannot be opened with one hand if that's important to you. But I guess that's due to the fact that it's able to turn around the display completely. So they have to make that firm as well. But this will result in many fingerprints over the time because you have to grab the whole laptop and touch it everywhere and yeah, the material is not very fingerprint friendly. My most favorite thing about this unit is probably the screen. It comes as I said before with 4K. It's an IPS touchscreen display. It has a brightness of around 280 nits. It has an sRGB coverage of around 97%. A Adobe RGB coverage of around 64%. The 4K resolution of course is a bit too much basically for a 15 inch screen. You don't need that but the result of that is that it's just super sharp. Oh and as stated before it comes with an active pen that you can just grab and doodle around in Word. And coincidentally a colleague of mine is a professional illustrator so I asked him if he could draw a nice picture for me with the help of this laptop in Photoshop, which he did. By the way, this is the picture that he draw. But quoting him, I have to say that neither the pen nor the display seem to be made for a professional illustrator as he is for a daily usage. Yes, he was able to draw a cool picture as you can see, but he criticized the lack of more pressure levels for the pen and that the slickness um, of the display is just too much to, to draw actually straight lines. There's just no grip as you would have on a piece of paper for example. Though he liked the colors and the display itself basically and the fact that the laptop or the display did not get very warm at least if he was using it like this and with some support on the background so he could use the display as some kind of canvas then nothing over here would get warm in any way. By the way, you can download a 4K version of this image if you'd like to. I will also post a link of this in the description. And make sure to check his website for amazing gaming artworks and just to be sure that he knows what he's talking about. But overall, let's summarize that the display itself is absolutely suitable for creative content creation with Adobe and such. But I guess the pen is more for quick notes and uh, doodling around in your office documents rather than professional illustrations on a daily basis. Now let's talk about the keyboard and the touchpad. I actually wrote the whole script for this video on this laptop, which is eight pages in German and English, but I was not very fond of the flatness of the key and I had made very many typing errors while doing this. There's almost no travel distance and it feels more like you're typing on a imaginary keyboard on some plastic. And by the way, it comes with two levels of illumination for the keyboard, no RGB though. The touchpad 
is absolutely horrible. In many cases, it did not work at all, which I never experienced before. I even checked for new drivers, but I could not find any. Reinstalling Windows would not help either. And I don't know if my unit is broken, but it was absolutely unusable on some occasions. Um, other than that, the feeling of the click is actually all right. The power key over here comes with a integrated fingerprint sensor, which did not work for me in 75% of the time. So after a while, I just stopped using it. And in case you wonder, my fingers are just perfectly fine. They are very graceful. Connection wise, on the left side, we do have the power plug, an HDMI port, a USB 3.2 port, and a USB C port with Thunderbolt 4, as well as display port support and power delivery. And on the right side, we have the audio jack. Yes, thank you. A USB 3 port and a micro SD card reader, which is usable for smartphone micro SD cards, but not for most camera regular SD cards. So I guess that's pretty much standard for a Ultrabook. There are of course official adapters for LAN and other connections if you're willing to spend a few more bucks. The 68 watt hour battery lasted for about 4.75 hours when watching YouTube at 50% brightness using headphones with a loudness of 20%. But I have to admit I did not use the super battery saving mode while testing this. And I got 15.5 hours on idle with a display brightness of 20% and activated Wi-Fi. You can recharge the laptop in 30 minutes by around 40%. And Dell offers a lot of options considering the battery, including quick charging, battery safe modes, battery conservation mode, which won't charge the laptop over a given percentage that you can choose yourself and so on. And I really like to have those options, to be honest. Actually, 68 watt is pretty okay and it should be enough for most people to get over the day at university or school or work, whatever. Now, I was actually pretty impressed with the quality of the sound and the speakers are at the bottom of the laptop. Especially for a lightweight convertible, I thought it was pretty okay. It could use more bass, um, but it's clear and the loudness could be a tiny bit louder, but nonetheless, it just feels like you have a bigger sound system in front of you and not just a small Ultrabook convertible. And it feels whole. Does that make any This is what the integrated camera looks like and what the microphone sounds like. Now performance wise, please note that I ran all tests with the fan performance mode to make sure the laptop gets enough cooling. The built-in NVMe SSD provides a reading speed of around 1300 to 1500 megabytes if it's empty and a writing speed of almost 2 gigabytes per second, which is alright, but the reading speed drastically slows down as the drive gets fuller, down to like 200 megabytes per second if it's almost full. And I've noticed that some of the games I've tested really loaded very, 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 very slowly. I have no idea if this is because of the SSD, because some games actually loaded super fast. Now the i7-1165 G7, which I've tested in this laptop, is actually the slowest i7-1165 G7 that I've tested. And I have I've had four to five of them over the last couple of weeks. And this is mainly due to the terrible cooling solution that this laptop offers. Sure, it's a small, slim, slick Ultrabook, but as soon as you start running Cinebench, it starts to throttle, just seconds later. And it throttles down to 2.8 gigahertz and stays at 100 degrees all the time though. But the delivered power stayed at 25 watts all the time for the CPU, so that was not a problem. To be honest, the CPU even throttled when I was just downloading games on Steam and Epic at the same time and doing nothing else. And I have to point out that some parts of the laptop right here above the keyboard over there, they get so hot that it actually starts to hurt your fingers if you press them on there. But one good thing about this terrible cooling solution is that the laptop does not get very loud due to the very low speed fans that are built inside of this. The maximum volume of the fans is around 37 decibel, which is not really that loud. I mean, of course, you can hear it when it's under load, but it's not terrible. 
So in Cinebench R15, I was getting around 823 points on the first run and around 793 points on the following runs. In Cinebench R23, I was getting around 5,225 points on the first run and in the following runs about 4,930 points. That does not make it the slowest um, i7 1165G7, but definitely not the fastest that I've tested, which again is due to the terrible thermal throttling that it experiences. And by the way, the Iris Xe Max, which is built inside of here, was not boosting up to 1600 MHz as it's supposed to. Instead, I was jumping up and down from 700 to 1500 MHz. And in GTA 5, I've actually noticed that the boost clock changed with the direction I was looking in game, which is very weird. So I guess Dell is not to blame for this, but Intel and their drivers. And I will pretty surely retest this GPU, not especially this laptop, but the Iris 60 Max in a few weeks or month, just to check if the driver issues have been resolved. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss that. By the way, the whole system drew around 58 watt while gaming with the integrated Iris XE and only around 40 watts when gaming with the Iris XE Max, so there's clearly something terribly wrong here. Now, I also tested Premiere this time and I rendered a uh, laptop review of mine and surprisingly, the project was rendered in 11 minutes and 12 seconds with the Iris XE Max but only 8 minutes and 40 seconds with the integrated Iris XE, so that's kind of disappointing, I guess. And I tried to run Blender this time as well, um, because there's this new technique from Intel called DeepLink 2.0, where DeepLink should enable the laptop to use the integrated GPU, the dedicated GPU, and the CPU for rendering in Blender. But unfortunately, with this laptop, I was not able to render anything at all because it would just crash and stop, not even really start um, the renderings. I've tested many Blender versions. I've tested several drivers with this. Nothing helped and nothing worked. And I've spent many hours trying to get something rendered and just nothing helped. The only thing that I was able to do was to render with the Intel i7 itself that worked, but not the GPUs. Now considering the gaming performance of this, well, where do I start? I mean, on paper, the dedicated Iris XE Max is um, supposed to be 15 to 25% faster than the Iris XE the integrated uh, one, but assumingly due to the lack of optimized drivers, it's actually the other way around. Um, the integrated chip is faster in almost every game that I've tested. I've actually made a dedicated video about this, just check it over here, where I compare both GPUs to each other. So clearly, as of now, do not buy this laptop if you thought that the Iris XE Max is going to get you better gaming results in any way, at least not yet until Intel fixes their drivers. Unless you are okay with the performance that the integrated Iris XE delivers, but then again you would not need to buy this unit um, and just get a cheaper one without the dedicated XE Max. Yeah. However, nonetheless, let's have a quick look at some of the games that I've tested. So the very good looking Control was running at Full HD and low settings with around 30 to 40 FPS, an average of around 34 FPS and a 1% low of 20 FPS. Um, at 1080p in such a small laptop with an integrated graphics card, I would say that's pretty acceptable and the game looks alright. You could just cap the FPS at 30 and enjoy console-like gameplay. In Fortnite I was choosing 1080p as well and the lowest settings, resulting in an average of around 82 FPS and a 1% low of 48 FPS which is very playable. You can just cap the FPS at 60 once more and enjoy fluid gameplay thanks to the 4-core 8 thread processor. There are not many stutterings or dips FPS-wise. Um, that's just pretty acceptable to play Fortnite this way, I guess. Probably the most realistic and beautiful wood scenes in any video game up to date can be seen in Kingdom Come Deliverance and I was able to achieve around 31 to 33 FPS on average with a 1% low of 27 FPS, a 
at Full HD and the lowest settings, but as you can see, the game actually still looks good. Once more, I would advise to cap the FPS at 30 to allow for stable gameplay without any dips at all. And The Witcher 3 is still my favorite game to benchmark, but as you can see on this laptop, I was having some problems with the frame times, resulting in a not so very fluid gameplay. It's still playable, but I had um, Iris XE laptops that managed to play the game more fluid than this. So I actually hope that this is driver related once more and can be fixed in the future because the frames, the, fr the FPS itself wasn't that bad with around 30 FPS. And last but not least, I fired up Red Dead Redemption 2 on 1080p with the lowest settings, resulting in an average of around 32 FPS and a 1% low of 28 FPS. And actually, that's pretty impressive uh, for me to have this Intel integrated graphics chip be able to run this game so well. You could also choose 900p or 720p, of course, and, and crank up the settings a bit to medium. Well, well, problems, yeah. I usually don't have a dedicated problem section, but this laptop really cost me a lot of nerves. First, in the two weeks that I've tested this laptop, I had around 20 to 25 blue screens, just sometimes doing nothing, sometimes writing on Word, sometimes gaming, sometimes installing new drivers. It was just terrible and happened all the time. I have no idea what's wrong with this laptop. It was just somewhat horrible. Second, as mentioned before, the thermal throttling and the thermals in general are really bad in this laptop. Third, driver issues. Well, that's not probably not uh, totally Dell's fault, but the Iris XE Max is yet terribly unoptimized. And I've tried several drivers for both GPUs actually, and at that progress, I actually had to factory reset the laptop twice because I was I managed to crash it so it was not usable anymore due to due to driver issues and I was so close to throw it out of the window just to test its flying capability and fourth some games actually did not work at all um, Call of Duty Warzone ran with about 4 FPS absolutely unplayable Metro Exodus didn't start at all as well as Cyberpunk 2077 refused to start at all and fifth, in general, I've spent a lot of time just fixing things that I wanted to test with this laptop, so enough. And actually, as of now, my recommendation would to completely turn off the Iris XE Max in this unit yet until they fix the drivers. But then again, you can just buy a cheaper version which does not have the XE Max in the first place and save around 300 to 400 bucks because that's the extra money they charge you for a non-working GPU. And because of all those problems, I'm actually having a hard time recommending this laptop to anyone. But even if those problems were not existence, I'm not really sure who should actually buy this laptop, because is it the office worker that needs a pen to quickly doodle stuff in Word once in a while while holding a presentation, or is it the graphics designer that sometimes needs the pen for a quick editing of Photoshop pictures? Is it the engineering student that needs a dedicated GPU for AI calculations? Well, you tell me, I don't, I actually don't know. And with this open question and no recommendation, that's all for today. If you like the content, please make sure to hit that like or subscribe button. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.